Hi everyone, uh, slightly different background-ish. Uh, the builders are in, uh, they've promised me it'll only take a week to do and hopefully when the next video comes out I'll be back to normal. Where was I? Um, yeah, I was hoping to uh, build a, another military vehicle, a wheeled or trapped, but I couldn't make my mind up, I was fanning about. And then uh, Gavin Booth, a fellow YouTuber, uh, mentioned the Shackleton. I knew I'd bought the Reval kit when it first came out so some time ago. So I had a rummage around because sometimes I, I buy kits and then I'll, I pass them on after a few years if I feel that uh, there's something better or I'm not interested anymore. But I still had it. So I got this for about 15 quid. That included uh, postage and packaging, which was a good deal. But it was classed as damaged goods. But the seller assured me that the contents were intact and true to his word, they were. I think Airfix, uh, back a year afterwards, came out with their AEW. Don't hold me to that. Talking of which, if you want an, an accurate Shackleton, the Airfix is the one to buy, I'm led to believe. The problem is, is that when it gives you one hand, it takes for the other. Uh, the surface detail is a bit basic. When you compare it to the Reval kit, uh, which is exquisite. Though saying that the detail on one wing was uh, crisp and sharp, and on the other there was a slight slippage. Uh, only noticeable when you started adding washes. Strange. But that may have been just my kit. So the inaccuracies. Well, over large windows, uh, antennas, aerials. You can do something about them if you want. But when they start mentioning wings and fuselage, it rings alarm bells. But I've seen enough photographs of this kit built up to know that it looks fine visually to me. It looks like a Shackleton. I should know. I saw him flying around in Lossy Mouth back in the late 70s. 79 and 80 when I was up there. That doesn't mean anything, does it? That was a long time ago. <laughs> Blimey. God. So, yeah. Um, and things like the decal sheet on the Rival kit. Uh, positions and things like that. I think there was a, a call out that was numbered wrong as well. Something or nothing. Now things like the antennas and aerials, I've added the two big ones on top of the fuselage because they're quite noticeable. But the ones on the outer wing, they were too fussy for me. So I've literally just built this straight out of the box with uh, those two exceptions. I'm waffling here. Uh, let's get on. Um, so let's see what I did with the kit. And I want to thank you for watching. I do hope to see you for the next video. See you later. So I've debagged everything. Some really beautiful surface detail. So there's quite a bit of flash on this uh, frame. Not the end of the world. Now you get two bags containing these frames. Uh, transparent parts, I won't get them out of the bag. Keep them clean and safe for now, but they do look quite nice through the bag. Two options. I just want to quickly show you um, how I go about cleaning these parts up. Each kit has its own quirks and this one is no exception. Regardless of the flash we've got here, the size of the attachment points uh, are immense. But the first thing I do is declip it all or release it, whatever terminology you like. I'm cutting not up to the fuselage, otherwise it may tear the plastic. And then trim up as close as I can. 
without taking too much of the fuselage off. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that I'm not going to clean these attachment points. I'm going to leave them because when I glue the fuselage, I'm going to be cleaning this surface anyway. All I'm concentrating on is the mating surfaces, making sure that we've got nothing standing in the way of closing these parts up. Also just clear the uh, pinholes. And on the other side, I've done the same, but we've got the pins. So I just file up to those. And that's all I'm doing as far as cleaning the parts up at this stage. As I've said, and I reiterate, I'm gonna be cleaning this top surface anyway, so there's no point wasting time cleaning these bits up. Same underneath. I'll clean the holes and windows of any flash, but other than that, these parts are done. So that's the uh, parts cleaned up. Well, these ones anyway. These parts, as I just mentioned uh, a few seconds ago, I've just got to make sure they fit properly because I'll be cleaning up uh, the seams when they're glued anyway. The props, I have numbered them just to be safe. So usually, um, we'd start with the cockpit area and do all that. But I want to concentrate on all these props. In other words, I want to start painting these first and get these out of the way with, uh, while I've still got the enthusiasm and the energy, uh, get these out of the way with. So the first thing I'm going to do to these uh, props is add um, a coat of black paint for the internals. Now the issue I'm having with these two parts here, the front spinner and the end cap, you've got quite big gaps around the prop area where these parts mate up. So I'm going to have to assemble the front spinner, which means I need to pre-paint these areas black first. While I'm doing that, I'll do these rear ones as well. So I've tried to uh, tidy up these joins. It's debatable whether it's worth the effort, but they were very clumsy looking. Uh, not the best area to try and sand with the props in the way. Uh, the plastic filler used is created from the same plastic as the kit. I never mix and match different plastics. So now that I've checked the seams, I'm going to paint uh, the tips white. So with that Tamiya white dry, I'm going to mask off the white areas. I've gone for a 2mm band width, about a millimetre down from the tip. So all the blades have been masked off. Applying the Tamiya Red should be quite easy with that white background. Shouldn't take more than a couple of coats. So I'm just going to demask the uh, white masking just to see if it's okay. The next thing I'm going to do is mask off the red. It's about a millimetre width. Once I'm happy I've got the band width even all the way around, I shall mask the complete tip off and then apply the black. Now I'm applying the black, but it's not a pure black. I've added a bit of grey. I never add a pure black to a model, it's just far too harsh. I always try and add a colour of some sort to the black. Right, let's peel all this masking off and see what I've got. This is supposed to be a fun hobby. It hasn't been fun so far. So I'm going to crack on with the undercarriage. So with the paint on the wheels dry, I've just added a, a Flores Dark Dirt wash. I may come back to it and add a black Tamiya Paneline wash later. For the main undercarriage, I'm going to use a mixture of Tamiya Black and Tamiya Brown uh, to give me a dirty oil stain colour. So I'm applying it all to the detail, do that all over. And once I've done that, I'm using white spirits just to tidy up and finish off. Now I'm going to close up the wings. 
uh, not forgetting to uh, add the lights. Rear tailplanes and end plates or fins. Rival offer you uh, movable services here, reminiscent of the old Airfix days. But what I'm going to be doing is uh, assembling them as different pieces, let the glue dry and clean them up, which is easier. And then further down the build, I'll assemble them as one unit then. Engine nacelles, nacelles, nestles, whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to add the lenses and I wasn't too sure whether to add coloured lenses or coloured bulbs. The box artwork shows you with coloured lenses but the photographs say a different story. So I'm going down the avenue of coloured bulbs. I've drilled out a couple of tiny little holes in each lens and then I did a little drop of Tamiya red and green clear. Now this should be easy but as you can see these lenses don't fit properly. So I'm going to use a bit of plastic card to build the lens out. With the plastic now dried thoroughly I'm just going to trim it down these lenses are a nightmare for me. The amount of times I've put them on the cutting board and they've disappeared. They blend in so beautifully. It doesn't help that the cutting board's a mess. But the other thing is that they're so fiddly. You just know in the back of your head that they're just going to twing somewhere across the room and then that'll be it. Good night, Vienna. I can't win here. Um, I've forced it out too much. So I'm going to have to sand it back a bit. So now I'm happy with the fit. I'm going to glue the lenses into place. Now the glue's dried thoroughly, I'm using a filler of my choice and cover the lenses completely. Then with the filler bone dry, I've sanded it all back. So everything blends in beautifully now. Any little gaps or divots will be filled in with the filler. My sanding stick of choice is a nail technician's file. It's cheap and if you look after it, in other words, clean it when you finish with it, this one's lasted me a few years. I've got all the grades, all to hand. You can see where I've chopped it down to make it a bit more manageable to use. So the last thing I'm going to do is just coat the ends with some Johnson's Clear. I may give it a couple of coats. Or oh, just a quick thing I did, I kept bending the fuel jetson pipe to the point where I just cut them off, cleaned the ends up and then I've drilled a pilot hole and then at the very end I'll just add a bit of plastic rod. So onto the fuselage. It comes in four pieces, uh, one of those pieces being the Bombay doors, but because I'm going to have them opened, it's out of the equation. So we've got the front and the rear and the ray dome. I was a bit suspect about the ray dome, having this flat spot underneath, but it does seem to be there looking at the photographs. Not sharply defined as on the kit, but it is there. It gives the impression of the ray dome, that's all that counts as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> So the best thing to do with the fuselages when they come in sections like this is to assemble one side at a time. That way we just end up with left and right pieces to glue later. The goal here is to assemble these parts with no work whatsoever to do. So a bit of dry fitting so I get the best fit possible. And with a bit of liquid glue, I want to try and make it look like it's just a recessed panel line. And any imperfections when joining the fuselage halves doesn't really matter because I'm going to be sanding that anyway. The first thing I'm going to do is join the front and the rear. I've added a couple of plastic strips, braces, reinforcement plates, whatever you want to call them. Maybe it's overkill, it's just peace of mind. I was in two minds about gluing the ray dome, but I will do anyway. The goal here, like the front and the rear fuse large parts, is to make a seamless joint. As with the front and rear joints, I don't want any sanding to be done whatsoever. 
So that's both fuselage sides done. Uh, next thing to do is to add the transparent pieces. Uh, they do ask you to add the side windows for the main canopy. I was hoping to avoid this, but the way the kit goes together, I have to do this now. So I've gathered all the pieces for the internals. So I'm going to start building some of these up. So I'm going to apply a dark grey to the interior and the side of the fuselage halves. Perhaps darker than it should be. I've already masked off the windows internally. Once this grey has dried, then I'm going to mask it off and apply an interior green at the rear. Interior green being a loose term. I shall mix the shade using these three colours from the photographs I've got. Next I'm going to apply by brush some colours. Uh, the seats look like a dark bluey grey if there is such a colour. I'm just going to use black. And then the seats at the back look brown. I'm not going to go overboard because by the time the fuselage halves are closed up, we ain't going to see a lot. Now that everything's dry, I'm not going to seal anything in with a varnish, it's a waste of time. I'm just going to dry brush with a white oil. Lastly, I'm going to use some Tamiya Paneline Wash to pick out some of the detail and then tidy up the areas using some white spirits by brush. Lastly, I have the decal supplied with the kit. We get some harnesses, not too sure about the colour, and a front console panel. Front console panel goes down well enough, and I was going to use some decal solution to sink it into the actual detail, but the decal seems slightly small. The curves are slightly different at the top, and the quarter panel demarcation line is different from what's on the actual plastic part. If you've got the energy and the talent, I'd paint the console part. It's nicely detailed as it is, but from what little we can see through the clear parts, I think personally the decal will do. Choice is yours. Now I can start assembling this all together. By the time I've closed the fuselage halves up, most of this detail will have disappeared. Uh, just one thing to point out, don't glue this rear bulkhead. Well, not all of it anyway. Remembering that the side glaze parts run across this and the last thing you want is glue on your shiny bits. So with all the internals good to one side of the fuselage, I'm just going to do a dry fit with the other side of the fuselage. Everything seems okay, although I've got an issue behind the cockpit here. But everything seems to have seated, so I don't know what that is. Probably pilot error. So I'm going to work my way along with some extra Tamiya Thin. So I've given it a good day for the glue to go off. And you can see here, I've covered all the openings so we don't get any dust or crap inside the fuselage. One of my pet hates. I was gonna to start to clean up the seam on the hinge area of the bomb bay, or weapons bay, whatever you want to call it. And I've decided to add some plastic strips. You can see I've added one already. I know this is overkill, and I'm covering up the slots for the bomb bay doors, and the doors will cover these unsightly gaps anyway. It's just a personal thing. So now I've cleaned up all the seams, I can add the transparent parts. So that's all the transparent parts added. Uh, no issues that came to mind, fitted very nicely. There's the odd slither of a gap on one of the top windows and where the split seam meets the uh, 
edge one of the transparent parts but other than that beautiful fits next is to mask all these glazed areas whoopee so all the windows have masked off uh, that was a chore and I've also masked off any openings or gaps I've used some uh, micro masks for the dome bits not the best stuff but uh, it's what I have to hand next thing I'll do is airbrush the seams and check for any imperfections not the ideal situation masking all the windows and then start sanding again but I need to protect the glazed parts from the paint Next, with the undercarriage being given a, a light uh, panel wash, I can assemble the engine nacelles, both inner and outer. With the glue now set, I'm going to fill some of these gaps. I'm going to do the easy one first. I'm going to use some Vallejo putty for the outer engine. Quick and easy fix. So to fill the gaps I've used sheets of plastic card. The biggest amount was used on the inner engine nacelle cell of the rear fairing. There was a slight step between that and the uh, back edge of the wing and there shouldn't be. It should run flush with the top of the wing. The other side wasn't too bad, it just required a bit of liquid plastic. So with both things tidied up, I've just added a layer of paint, just to spot for any imperfections, and of course there was. With these sorted out now, I can get on with the final paint job. So we're ready to start the main paint job and I shall be painting the Shackleton as we see it here, broken down as these assemblies. I've chose a couple of colours, there's XF75 and XF82. And I've gone for XF82 because it has that bluish tinge to it. So I sprayed it on a bit of plastic card just to test to see whether it looked alright when it dried. And it'll do me. It's close enough for me not to make a custom mix. So all the parts have been applied with XF82, Ocean Grey 2. So with the paint left to dry for a few days, I'm going to mask off the areas and apply the white to the weapons bay, the rear flaps, undercarriage guard and so on. I've left it to this stage because it's easy to mask off. It's easy to mask off around the outside of the weapons bay than it is to mask off inside. That's the only reason. Now we're ready for the decals, uh, oh joy. I'm gonna prep the surface like I usually do. The wings, I'll use the foam back, well used bit of sandpaper with water. But the fuselage, I'll use a damp cloth, mainly because of all the masking and all the lumps and bobs. But for key decals, like the Royal Air Force one on the side of the fuselage, I shall sand that area around there. I'm so sorry, I, I've lost the clip where I'm showing you adding the walkway decals. It was really riveting. So much fun and I'm, I apologise for uh, losing it or doing something with it. As far as the walkway is concerned or the yellow uh, demarcation, I would have thought it would have gone on top of the roundel. But it doesn't. Looking at a photograph, it does go underneath or stops when it hits a roundel. I've made a boo-boo on adding the roundel over the top of the yellow, hoping that it'd be opaque enough to hide it, but it wasn't. After all the decaling, I've given the surface a wipe with a damp cloth, and then I've sealed everything in, paint and decals, with Tamiya X22. Ratio is about 30 to 70, 35 to 65, 35 being the paint. Several light coats, and then one heavy wet coat. With that done now, before I can start on the panel wash and some weathering, 
I'm going to put these to side for a couple of days for that uh, gloss to harden properly. Uh, one thing I've got on with is the anti-glare patch. I keep forgetting about it. So you can see here I've masked it off already. And I'll be using uh, an off-black colour. I think I've just added a bit of grey. Just turn it down. And the paint will be slightly thick. Just to stop that risk of thin paint running underneath the Tamiya tape. So I've left that dry for about 20 minutes. Let's peel it all off and see what we've got. Next thing I want to do with all these assemblies is to tone down this shiny surface. Give it a bit of patina for want of a better word. So I've created a, my own mix using watercolours and a little bit of detergent or shower gel. You've got to be careful with the detergent about the amount you use and what type you use because it can affect the surface of the paint. But it needs to be added just to stop the water from beading on the surface. So I'm going to very carefully follow all the rivet lines and not give it a blanket wash. That's not what I want to do. So this is quite time consuming, but I'm hoping it's going to be worth it. So I'm just testing it on the rear tail. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I can wash all this off. So I've left that two or three hours to dry and then using a bit of old t-shirt and the vapour from my breath, I'm going to wipe the excess off. I will not be using any water or a damp cloth, otherwise it will bring this wash completely out. So I don't know where the camera's picking this up, but hopefully you can see a before and after. Not only are the rivet lines filled in and some of the panel lines, but if you can see past that you can see slight stains over the surface patchiness which is just what I wanted. So now I'm happy that this has worked I should apply the rest of this technique to the rest of the assemblies. Now with the fuselage because of the work done on the seams on the top and underneath a lot of the rivet detail is gone. I've rescribed some of the panel lines but trying to replicate the kitchen rivets will be a waste of time it would look odd yin and yang. So what I've decided to do here is just to pick out the panel lines and certain areas of interest, i.e. door frames, things like that. And hopefully visually that'll be enough to break up this surface. So before I do any more to these wings, I've just added the exhaust downpipes because it's easier at this stage. And I'm just adding the cooling gills. Now you can have these open or closed. If you want them closed, they fit beautifully. If you want them open, they don't seat right. So I've just trimmed a bit of plastic on the lead and edge there so there's a slight arc just so they seat properly. So while I've got the wings off I'm going to add some smoke stains. Now because of the uh, modified downward exhaust pipes a lot of the crap was kept under the wing and a lot of it was blown away unlike the early Shackletons where the top of the wing was covered in crap. So I'm not going to go overboard I'm going to use black Burnt number, I've created a very thin wash and I'm just going to create a smudge stain first. So apply it on and then using a the cotton wool bud, blend it in, going in the direction of flight. Next, I'll add a bit more. I will let that go off and then do the same. It's better to build up oils rather than finding that you've put on too much and you need to take it off. I keep feeling there's something I've missed. Let's stick these wings on. Sorry, let's assemble these wings to the fuselage.
So all the wings and the tail units all assembled, I can start adding all the other peripherals now. Now the rear flaps, they should really be in the closed position and it's just a matter of uh, snipping off the tabs and they fit quite nicely but it seems a shame not to show them open. So that's what I'm going to do. Now the front cowls, I didn't glue on. They just squeeze fit on, pretty good fit. They just simply squeeze off and this will make the assembly of the props and the radiator face so much easier. Once I've done all that, I shall squeeze fit them back on. Right, a couple of things to do. The Shackleton has quite a distinctive cable run from the top of the fuselage to the back of the rear tails. I'm using MIGS rigging, uh, 0.1. This is like working with spiders web, it's a nightmare. So it'll either work or it won't. I'll give it a go. Uh, some other things that I keep forgetting about and need adding, uh, there's a couple of aerials on the observer's nose to add. So I'm just using a bit of Tamiya tape, just act as a guide to drill these pilot holes. I hope I don't slip. So there we are, done and dusted. So I don't know about you, but it looks like a Shackleton to me. It definitely has that stance. So I'll take some pictures and I hope you like the end results. And I want to thank you for watching.